This is chapter one, lesson two. Uh, we're looking at how to display quantitative data with graphs and different ways of doing that. For those of you that have already had stats, uh, this should be a review or at least most of it. Uh, so dot plots are what we're already familiar with. We mentioned in the last lesson each data value is a dot above its location on a number line. Uh, so you end up with a series of dots, and that's one way to, to plot your distribution of data. So when we say distribution, we're talking about a display of the data. All of these are different ways of displaying the distribution. A stem plot is one that we've mentioned in, cla in class quickly. Organized by place value. Large place values form the stems with the uh, smaller ones forming the leaves. If we have, uh, especially if we have a lot of information in one stem, a lot of leaves, we could break it up. When we do that, we have to make sure we break the stems up evenly. So 0 to 4 and 5 to 9 is place value, so that um, we still have a uniform way of displaying the data. We couldn't, for example, have 0 to 3 and then 4 through 9, because then we wouldn't, our display of data wouldn't be objective. It'd be a, the size of it would be different, and it would be not showing a true display of our data. So that's uh, when we split stems. Uh, that also gives us a better picture of what's going on with the data. Back-to-back -back stem plots um, are when we have two sets of data, and they're a good way of comparing data. If we're going to compare data, that's what we want to do with a stem plot. Um, it's where we have the place values in the middle, and on one set of uh, on, on the right we have one set of data. On the left we have the, a second set of data to compare two distributions. So um, if we do that, then the stem plot on the left the order of the numbers goes from least to greatest from right to left. And then on the right, it goes from least to greatest from left to right. So let's take a look at what that means. So here's a back-to-back -back stem plot example. So you can see that over here we have one set of data, a distribution, and over here we have another. So we plot our values. So this stem would be 60s, the 70s, 80s, 90s, 100s, 110s, 120s, 130s, 140s. So here we have uh, 73 and 75 in the set of data for brand X, where we have 70, 74, 76, 78, 79, 79, and 79 for the ordinary brand. So in this way, uh, ordinary brand has the values going from least to greatest from right to left, since it's on that side of the stems, whereas brand X has them going from least to greatest from left to right. So that's the one thing with the back-to-back -back stem plot to keep in mind is least to greatest. On the right side, the data set goes from left to right, least to greatest. On the, on the right side, that is. On the left side, the order from least to greatest is right to left. So here's an example of splitting stems. Over on the left, we have a data set, but it is not in order. So uh, first, we created our stems. We have all of the digits there from our data. Then we go through and we put them in order. So we have 21, 25, 26, 26, 26, and 29 would be that first line. And then if we're going to split the stems, because, for example, in this third line, we have a lot of data values. So we split them up over here, and we have 30 through 34 in one line, 35 through 39. So it's displaying the data the same way, but this gives us a better idea of how spread out the data is. So here, splitting the stems is preferable because we get a better idea of where our uh, peak truly is, where our median is, and just visually get a better representation of the data. So that's how we split stems. Remember, when you split them, you have to do so equally. So here they did uh, 0 through 4 and then 5 through 9. So you, numbers 20 through 24 would appear up here, 25 through 29 would appear down here. Another way to display our data is a histogram, which looks similar to a bar graph but has some key differences. So histograms for quantitative variable, uh, meaning that uh, it takes on numeric values, whereas a bar graph is for categorical variables, so like our yes and no's in our, in our response bias project. Here we would have um, in our example, we have heights of black cherry trees and how many trees we have on the y-axis. So these are quantitative variables, and in, that means there's another key difference. We don't separate the bars. We separate the bars in a bar graph because they're categories. Here, they're numerical values, so they have to be placed next to each other in order for the, um, the x-axis down here to be uniform. And that gives us an objective analysis and display of the data. So um, in order to break down all of these uh, displays of, of our distribution of data, we're going to look at shape, center, spread, and any apparent outliers. Um, 
And one other key thing with a histogram is your, these bins should be of equal sizes. So they should be next to each other, they should be equal sizes. So let's talk about shape, center, spread, and outliers. So when we look at shape of a distribution, we're looking at a, a peak, which, we, which you may know as the mode, meaning the most frequently occurring uh, data, piece of quantitative data. We're looking if the shape is skewed right, meaning there appears to be a tail to the right of the distribution, or skewed left with a tail to the left. And we say skewed right and skewed left because data that comes down on the tail like that will skew the mean either to the right or to the left, which is why when we look at the center, we oftentimes use the median. So if we have skewed data, we'll, we'll oftentimes use the median because it gives us a better idea of where the true center of the data is um, instead of having some data that's far off to the left or far off to the right that would throw off our mean. We can use the mean when the shape is symmetric or approximately symmetric. So, but what we mean by symmetric is if we put a mirror at the peak, the left and right side would look identical. So the, the graph would look the same. Um, approximately symmetric is generally what we get. There aren't a lot of things in real life that are symmetric and even approximately symmetric. So oftentimes we have some sort of skew to our data, but there's different things like biological data or measurements of tools and parts that often uh, follow a distribution that's approximately symmetric, meaning it looks the same on the left and right of the peak. So that's shape, where we describe the mode or the peak of our data, whether it's skewed right, I mean a tail to the right of the distribution, or skewed left with a tail to the left. Center, again, the median is what we generally use, the mean when it's symmetric. Uh, spread, it tells us how much variability is present in the data, meaning how how far apart the data is from the median and the mean. So we can look at the maximum and the minimum. The range would be the maximum minus the minimum. How, um, how many numeric values does the, does the data distribution cover? Uh, and finally, the fourth thing we look at is outliers. Uh, we're going to look at how we qualify outliers numerically in the next lesson. But here, all we're looking at is that outliers would fall outside the overall pattern of the graph, meaning they would stand out as being far less than the rest of the data set or far greater than the data set. So they'll either be much smaller or much larger. So when we look at any distribution, we're looking at the shape, the center, the spread, and the outliers. Shape, whether it's skewed right or left with a peak, would be the mode. Um, center, we're looking at the median. We can use the mean when it's a symmetric or approximately symmetric. Spread, how much variability, meaning how far are things apart from each other, how far are things from the median and the mean. So we look at the range, the maximum minus the minimum, and outliers, anything that falls outside the overall pattern of the graph because it's much too large or much too small. So let's take a look at some graphs up here. We have an approximately symmetric graph, meaning if I put a mirror right there, um, it's about the same on the left as it is on the right side. Uh, so this is an approximately symmetric graph. Looks like we have one peak towards the middle, although we have two bins that represent that peak. Uh, we would still call this unimodal meaning it has one mode, one peak, rather than bimodal, which has two clear peaks, or multimodal, which has three or more. So here we have an approximately symmetric graph. This graph is skewed right because we have data that falls far to the right, looking like a tail coming down. And so that would throw our mean off to the right because we have data that's much larger over here, but most of our data is in this area. Uh, and then we have one that's skewed left. We have the, the greatest amount of our data in this area. However, we have a tail coming down to the left here, which would throw our mean off to the left. So again, skewed left, the tail's coming down here. Skewed right, it's coming down here. Symmetric, it looks like you could put a mirror there, and it's the same on both sides. So when we compare distributions, we have to be sure to compare their shape, center, spread, and outliers. Remember what's involved in that. Shape, peak, meaning the mode, the most frequently occurring data, and then any sym symmetry or whether it's skewed. The center, the median is good to use if it's skewed right or skewed left, the mean otherwise. And then we're looking at uh, how spread out it is from the maximum and the minimum and whether anything's an outlier. Um, for now, all we need to know that outliers are much larger or much smaller than the data set. So here's our multiple choice question. Describe the distribution illustrated by the following histogram, shape, center, spread, and outliers. So is it A, skewed right with a peak at 20 to between 20 and 30, unimodal with a range of 60, and no clear outliers? 
B skewed left with a peak at 20 to 30, unimodal with a range of 60, and no clear outliers? Is it C approximately symmetric with a peak at 20 to 30, unimodal with a range of 60 and no clear outliers? Is it D skewed right with a peak at 20 to 30, bimodal with a range of 60 and no clear outliers? Or E skewed left with a peak at 20 to 30, bimodal with a range of 60 and no clear outliers? Um, so in order to look at this, use your vocabulary, look back in the video, read the summary on page 42 and the rest of lesson, chapter 1, lesson 2. Remember when you're describing a distribution, you're looking at shape, center, spread, and outliers and what goes into that.